Peace be with you <clears throat> and with your spirit from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Apostle Matthew writes, From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He returned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world but, but forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay everyone according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the truth. Peace be with you. للمسيح يسوع التسبيح والبركات من أجل كلامه الحي لنا للمسيح يسوع التسبيح والبركات. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ for giving us his words of life. <coughs> My dear friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today in our church we celebrate the fifth week of the season of resurrection. And in the beginning I want to ask everyone a question. Have you ever had a moment of great success and triumph? And then only to be followed by a moment of great failure. Think about your life, because it is that the same thing happened to Peter. In our meditation upon this passage of St. Matthew's Gospel, we are going to see that it was the case of Peter who had moments of great success and triumph when he was able to know the true identity of Jesus, <clears throat> you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and to you I will give the keys to the kingdom of God. And also Peter also had other moments of failure. Jesus reprimands Peter with some harsh words because him and his friends didn't understand what it means to be a Messiah. They want a Messiah for them, according to what they believe and according to what they understand. In today's Gospel, Jesus is going to teach us what it means for him to be the Messiah and what it should mean for us to follow such a Messiah, to follow this Messiah who is Jesus. In, in Caesarea Philippi, Peter had moments of great joy and triumph and success when he was able to recognize the identity of Jesus when Jesus said, what do you think that I am? Simon Peter jumped and said, you are the Messiah the Son 
of the living God. However, when Jesus tried to explain to Peter and to his disciples, to his friends, what it means for him to be the Messiah, Peter had a negative reaction. And Jesus met Peter also with more and more of negative reaction too, by telling him, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your, your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Get away from me. For Jesus, <clears throat> the true reality as Messiah, that it was necessary for him to go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. However, the disciples, and especially Peter, did not like what they heard because they believed in the utmost power and eternity of the awaited Messiah. The awaited Messiah will have full power and he will stay alive forever. No one can punish him. He will be able to punish every person, especially the criminals and the sinners. And he will be able to kick all the nations out of Israel and build the kingdom of God forever and ever in Israel. Why did he do that? It is because in addition that Jesus is their teacher, that Jesus is their friend and master, he is their Messiah, the son of the living God. So he couldn't accept that the Messiah will die in Jerusalem. He couldn't accept that people will have more power than the Messiah that he was waited and waited for so many hundreds of years. Peter and his friends didn't think or believe that the Messiah should suffer or should be punished for a mistake or a sin of other people. He didn't, of, for a mistake or sin he didn't do. Peter and Jesus' disciples believed that the Messiah will have every kind of power and authority. However, the way that God sees, sees things completely different to what we see things. After Jesus has prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, he knew that it is very necessary for him to die, to go and die on the cross. And also, he didn't want anyone to stop him from achieving this goal because it was his father's will for his life. Then also, Jesus <clears throat> found it very necessary for us to be willing to die if we choose to be Jesus' disciples. He said, if anyone, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. St. Paul said, my life is Christ. Death is something that I gain. What a beautiful thing to die when I am with Christ. So when you come to believe in Christ and Messiah that way, death will be the, the door or the bridge to the eternal life. Jesus is telling, is willing to stay committed to his task because he wants to be faithful to his Father. And also because he knew that the reward is much, much greater than the sacrifice that he is going to, to offer for us and for our salvation on the cross. It is the same way for us. Any sacrifice we do for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of the church, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of our families, for the sake of our communities, for the sake to bring the peace of God to be with us, the reward will be much and much greater than this kind of sacrifices. At that time, Jesus was talking about a real sacrifice, about shedding your blood for the sake of this kind of faith. But now, what kind of sacrifices Jesus Christ wants us to have so we can keep his peace and we can be his disciples 
in our world, in our time. First of all, plenty. Every one of you can mention plenty, but let me mention a few things. First of all, to stop gossiping. If we don't stop gossiping, we cannot be called Jesus' disciples. Second, we have to put Jesus number one in our life. Not any, not any other thing or any other person. Jesus will be number one. When the rich man was called by when the rich man came to Jesus and asked him, What should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus told him, Go and sell everything and come and follow me. Money and property and wealth were a stumbling block for him, and this man wasn't able to do it. Don't let money, property, boss or rank stop you following Jesus because if you are stopped because of that you are not worthy to be a Jesus disciples. Many people in our time aren't willing to sacrifice alcohol or pornography or pride or ranks. They cannot also be Jesus disciples. If we are not able to stop loving people we cannot be called Jesus disciples. If we hurt, if we hate people all the time, how can we how can we be Jesus disciples who taught us to love and especially from his cross to forgive one another as he as Jesus did it from the, the top of his cross? How many people they refuse to give up comfort and to make the life of one neighbor a little bit better because they want their life to be extraordinary? They cannot be also Jesus' disciples. Jesus is talking about real sacrifice. Many people of us have no idea what it means to really follow Jesus Christ because we have no idea what it really means to sacrifice in order to follow Jesus Christ and to live as true disciple uh, for Jesus in the world. That's why Jesus left us his Holy Spirit. Let us tonight ask the Holy Spirit to speak in us and also to teach us and to remind us about everything Jesus has taught us and let us adore the third person of the Holy Spirit and uh, ask him wisdom, ask him strength, ask him the power of God and ask him to make us every single moment Jesus' disciples in the world. Amen.